Hi there. This is a year two micro presentation looking at some of the arguments against the policy or the strategy of price discrimination by firms with monopoly power. Here's a theoretical diagram showing an example of third degree price discrimination. Consumers on the left hand side have a more price elastic demand. In other words, they're responsive to small price changes. And typically a firm here would would cut the price for those consumers to P1 compared to the higher price P2 on the right hand side where demands more inelastic consumers have a, a greater willingness and ability to pay. We're assuming here the marginal cost of supply is the same to both markets. So the price is above marginal cost in both cases. In the left hand side the monopolist charges a lower price compared to the right hand side and of course the higher the, the, the lower the elasticity of demand the higher the price that can be charged. So let's build the welfare case against price discrimination. The first point really is that ultimately price discrimination is, is, is a form of price strategy by monopolists, which in most cases exploits the consumer. You know, in most cases, there's a loss of consumer welfare. The consumer is paying more than the marginal cost of supply. Indeed, what the monopolist is doing is the monopolist is turning consumer surplus into higher producer surplus or supernormal profit. Here's a good example, I think, of, of price discrimination, effectively price gouging, which, which went a little bit beyond the pale. Your friend's actually just been fined, uh, having been found guilty at the tail end of 2015 in a court in Australia for trying to sell the same painkillers at different prices, but except they were branded differently. So the labels on the pack suggested they were targeting migraine pain, tension headache, period pain, stiff backs, etc. They all contained exactly the same ingredient, a type of ibuprofen, but they were being, being sold at different prices, uh, partly because of the behavioural aspect of, um, of framing what they, what they were going to do for you. The placebo effect is alive and well in Australia. And you could argue, I think, that this is a form of price discrimination, which is just, just not right. Um, many firms use price discrimination as a form of uh, barrier to entry in markets so they may deliberately cut the price to some consumers for example to a limit price just make normal profits maybe even less um, deliberately to try and inflict some commercial damage on a potential rival or an existing firm so you could argue that some forms of discrimination are effectively a form of barrier to entry and I guess ultimately uh, although there are some external benefits from price discrimination, you know, pricing some low-income consumers into the market, uh, which, which might have some social welfare and social equitable justifications, I think fundamentally, um, price discrimination, if it's successful, it tends to reinforce the market power, the market dominance of existing firms. Now, there are ways of coping with this. Uh, you know, regulators can intervene and you can tax monopoly profits, for example, um, but price targeting is ultimately in the interests of producers rather than consumers. So there's some of the arguments against price discrimination. I think in essays it's important to think about economic efficiency, price relative to marginal costs, for example, uh, and the, the issue of whether uh, monopoly pricing is ultimately in the interest of consumers rather than producers.